I know the thing now is gaining certifications to in order to secure jobs in cybersecurity, but I really like building my foundation before I get into certs. That's not any shade, but more of an indication of how intimidating those CompTIA breakdown videos are to me, so. If you are new to my channel, hello, 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 everybody. My name is Katie and this is my channel, Katie Codes, where I just post videos about my journey in STEM, software, and just my life, you know, simple things. If any of that sounds uh, sounds interesting to you, please feel free to give this video a thumbs up. That helps me a lot. And make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notifications without further ado let's go ahead and get into today's video if you do not know what ctfs are never fret you have come to the right place i actually have a blog that i just started and it's located on katiecodes.com you can feel free to check that out i'll have a link in the description box if you're not familiar with what ctfs are that'd be a great place to start but also google cool, cool. Let's go ahead and get started with these topics. <laughs> Our first category is going to be cryptography. So mostly uh, crypto cryptography or crypto CTF challenges will involve some type of decoding or encoding a message in like with um, either hashes or ciphers. So um, some when it when it comes to you know both hashes and ciphers. Uh, in CTF, at least in the beginner CTF challenges, you'll notice that they're not necessarily hashes or ciphers that are used, you know, today in the real world. Um, most of the time they're, you know, uh, hashes and ciphers that have already been hacked or already have been proven to be faulty. So um, when it comes to cri cryptographic challenges, you will uh, most likely see um, hashes like um, MD5 or SHA-1 or 2. Um, and then in the cipher realm, I generally found that in beginner challenges, it was usually, you know, rotational substitution ciphers. G-U-R-T-H-E. A shift value of 13. It's a ROT13 algorithm. So it's pretty good to be um, to be familiar with some um, some some substitution ciphers like Caesar or you know the rotational ciphers like I mentioned before. Um, and also be familiar with how to address those in Linux. That's like a simple Google search. All right, so our next topic is gonna be digital forensics. Of forensics, which it just mainly concerns like file analysis or encoding or decoding files with like binary, hex, or SI values. Um, within the umbrella of like forensics is, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this word, st stenography. Stinganography, I think that's like the more popular, you know, type of thing where you just hide different information in different file types like zip files or images or audio files or PDFs. I think that one's like more well known and like more common. Next, we have binary exploitation, capture the flags, which can be summarized basically by buffer overflow. <laughs> So most of them will, so most of like binary exploit hacks or like CTFs that you find online will probably involve some type of buffer overflow exploit or something like that. Now, reverse engineering concerns analyzing a program. For example, just using a debugger to analyze like the assembly of a program. So if you have a C program that you're trying to analyze, you just throw it into a debugger like GDB and you analyze the assembly of it and then you try to see where you can exploit that code and make it do what you want and infiltrate like some malicious code or something like that. Code injects. 
I'm gonna list a few um, popular debuggers. I think right here. Living in the sunlight, loving in the moonlight, having a wonderful time. So you can go ahead and check those out and like Google them. Our next one is going to be website and mobile exploits. I mainly group these together because, you know, most of the time we access sites through our mobile phones right now, you know, because we both use our phones and stuff like that. Web CTFs usually involve some type of SQL injection or like cookie exploits and like exploiting JavaScript bugs or like cross-site forgery, you know, type things. I would recommend looking up SQL map and Burb Suite for those ones. And lastly, we have networks where you analyze network packets and internet internet traffic um you can check out tutorials on nmap and like wireshark and like uh, tcp dumps and stuff like that well i hope that was helpful for all the newbies in cybersecurity like me make sure you leave a comment down below about some ctfs that you're currently thinking of using and any exam and any examples of like any of the information that i mentioned in this video this is katie Coase, and i hope to see you in my next video